Sociologist Charles Murray's book, Coming Apart, may be the single most important book in print for understanding the decline of the American middle class and the rise of Donald Trump. In other words, college students could learn something from reading it and listening to him. But instead, when Murray tried to speak at Middlebury College in Vermont in March, students got so violent that a professor escorting Murray had to be hospitalized. Another professor was so intimidated by the mob, he apologized for inviting Murray at all. We recently spoke to the Secretary of Education and Ronald Reagan's administration, Bill Bennett, about what happened. This does seem, you know, it's one of a million examples, but it seems particularly illustrative because Middlebury A is a serious school. Uh, it's a famous school. Yes. It's a well-regarded school. It's, it's very hard to get into. School. It's very expensive. very expensive. And here you have a professor who's learned exactly the wrong lesson from what happened with the Murray speech. Are you surprised? Uh, no, I'm not surprised. Uh, that's what goes on in places like Middlebury. Uh, and uh, we've seen it at other campuses. The odd thing to me is I know Charles Murray very well. I know you know him. <clears throat> there isn't a more civilized human yes. being. Uh, if you read his book, Coming Apart, uh, the, the professors up there at Middlebury read it, said it's a middle-of-the-road uh, uh, approach approach to things, but because Murray wrote the bell curve about cognitive stratification, but they would not let him speak. Um, this is an outrage. Let me get right to the point. Uh, can this stop? Yes, if the people in charge, and the students are not in charge, I know it's cliche now to say the inmates are running the asylum, the doctors are running the asylum, the doctors are the administrators yes. and the faculty, and they're quacks, and they need to stand up and say what the college or university is for. Uh, my only argument with Charles is that he shouldn't have stood there so long. I don't think he should have stood there for an hour and taken it. And where was the administrator who would step up and say, stop this, you will be arrested if you keep this up, you will be expelled. This does happen, Tucker, occasionally at other campuses. Uh, Ohio State, they handled it very well. At Middlebury, they couldn't. But you've got to wonder. What am I paying $55,000 a year for? Well, exactly. And, and not just the parents paying the tuitions, which I think probably a minority in a lot of these schools, but the taxpayers subsidizing all of this. So where's the incentive to change if institutions like, like Middlebury remain the richest institutions in American life? Uh, there's not much incentive to change from the perspective of the parents. Because as we found out when I was Secretary of Education, they will pay almost anything right. to get a prestige degree or what's told to them to be a prestige degree. The only people who uh, I think who can do it in the short run are the Board of Trustees, if they have any sense of responsibility, uh, and, uh, and the faculty. However, this bubble may burst. Um, my friend David Galerner at Yale thinks yes. it's going to burst because of the absurdity of it all. Plus, technology is uh, coming in on the university. People are taking more and more courses online. People are starting to get educations online. The brilliant man Peter Thiel, we were talking about earlier, has uh, uh, enlisted students out of high school, not to come to a university, but to come to a setting in California where they work with each other uh, and don't go to college just develop their own ideas. Alternatives are spreading out or breaking out all over the place. But in the short run, couldn't we do this, Tucker? Which is if you have someone on campus with whom you disagree or a number of students disagree, have someone with an opposing point of view right. give a counter presentation or have a debate. This is what happened to me. When I went to Stanford to defend Western civilization, they said, anybody around who can defend Western civ, anybody interested, put my hand up. Sure, I'll do it. <laughs> anybody else, I'll do it. I went out. They said, but you must respond to critics. You must respond to the faculty. I went out did an hour and a half with the faculty after my speech. That's the way to do it. Don't shout them down. Exactly. Hear the argument. If it's absurd, show it to be absurd by your own argument. Well, that's the premise of the show. Legitimate debate is the key way that people's minds are changed, I think. You would think, especially on a campus, on a university, the free marketplace of ideas, you know? This is what it's supposed to be. And I always think, there's a great line from Eva Brand. She was one of the uh, tutors at St. John's College. Yes. She said, these little republics are dependent upon this larger republic and its principles. And those principles are, as we know, free exchange of ideas. So really quickly, should in the meantime, before this happens, should conservative parents opt out of this whole cycle of seeking prestige degrees for their kids? It would be a good idea, but it's very hard to tell parents to do that, particularly when in neighborhoods that you and I know about, they enroll kids. I overheard this conversation in preschool at four years old saying, yes. it's a feeder to Harvard. It's a what? It's yeah. a feeder to Harvard at four. So people seek prestige. Uh, and as the sociologists will tell you, this is one of the things most sought after yes. after people satisfy their basic material needs status.
I think it's a big would deal. live outside if they had enough prestige. Right. Imagine what you could. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Exactly right. Dr. Bill Bennett, thanks all for joining us. Thank it was you, great. Tucker. Thank you very much.